Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. So beyond the introduction, I'm going to introduce myself again, a little bit more details. So yeah, I've been in security since 2008. Uh, so I've been working at Twilio since 2015. And something important here, I've been working on the division that makes OTP and TOTP products. Uh, I was their security officer for six years. I am still at Twilio. Uh, you, you may hear about the layoff. I'm still there. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, things I learned there uh, by my own research and by some divine things that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so I assume everyone knows what is this, but let's uh, do a recap. What's an OTP or a TOTP? This is a typical uh, Uber registration. They send you an SMS with a four digit. Uh, OTP, OTP comes from one time password. For some reason, Uber decided that four digits was good enough. I don't know why, but that's what I did. This is a real screenshot from them. And um, so it's also being used for other stuff than uh, 2FA or verification. This is my TV. So to associate my TV for, uh, with my Disney Plus account on my phone, you can use OTPs too. So uh, it's being used over, all over the place. Uh, on the left here, we see the typical Authy app. Have you used the Authy app ever? Or you know what it is? Okay, awesome. And on the right, the Google Authenticator app. Have you used Google Authenticator? Okay. Okay, so this also, uh, I'm a Citibank customer, and I noticed that they changed from eight digits to six digits somewhere in 2001. I don't know why. If you know, let me know. Uh, they decided that eight was a lot and hard, and they went to six. That's probably related to UX. That's what my experience tells me. People are getting wrong. And on the bottom right, we have the typical RSA. Have you used this token? Everyone nodding are old. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is very common. So this is widely used everywhere. Okay, things are already said, one-time password. Uh, usually four to eight digits, could be longer, uh, generated randomly, expires after a few minutes after creation. And uh, what's a TOTP? It's very similar. So instead of being completely random, it's the result of applying an algorithm based on time and a secret. So it's typically six to eight digit longs. It can, it can be shorter too, but that's what's common. And also usually expires after a few minutes. So even if it's displayed for a couple of seconds or 30 seconds, it's usually valid for a minute or even more. It depends on the implementation. So that's also something to, to consider for this talk. And so many OTPs, TOTPs can be valid at any given time. This will be important when doing the math about brute forcing them. So a short story and why I'm doing this talk. So I recently joined the Authy team in 2015. And around 2016, a researcher in the back bounty came to us and say, hey, when I have unlimited attempts to try to add an Authy device. So Authy devices can be added with an SMS, with a secret digit code, at least it was at the time. And yeah, they, they, you would have like three attempts and they, you would need to wait a couple of minutes and then maybe ask another OTP. And I said, okay, so there's no risk there, right? So it's one chance in a million, then there's another random OTP sent, there's another one in a million chances of guessing. So what's the issue there? So I talked with other security engineers at Twilio. Everyone agreed there's no risk, engineers. I was going to answer, we are going to reject your, uh, your, your, your report. Uh, but I decided to open a spreadsheet and start doing the math. And as we realized, Okay, this is not how math works. Math works differently. And that's what had triggered me to do, uh, write a blog post about it and, and this talk. And we paid handsomely the, the researcher. Uh, it was a valid finding. Okay, so we're gonna briefly talk about design implementation bugs. We are not gonna be talking about those, but I just wanted to mention them. So yeah, long expiration time. This is typical. So yeah, it's gonna be valid for an hour and I'm gonna allow you a hundred attempts in that hour. So those typical things happen. Or the OTP is too short. I remember one customer saying we want it to be the replacement of credit cards, uh, CBB, I want it to do three digits. 
So you start to get into a very risky place when you do that if you don't have full considerations. You also wanted it to be many hours long. And I think that's a standard today. Uh, but you need to be conscious about those stuff. Uh, too many OTPs valid at any given time, that's especially valid with TOTP where many can be valid at any given time. Uh, OTP reuse, so I receive one, two, three, four, I use it, and then they ask me another one. I use one, two, three, four, and it still works. So no, not expiring those. QOTP back use, so traveling back in time and using uh, an OTP that was valid a minute ago, for example. And other stuff, answering machine takeover. I don't know if you heard about that. It's super interesting. Uh, things that you need to consider when designing solutions for OTP. Typical implementation bug that I've seen, and I've seen many, many of these, is by bypassing OTP flows. For example, you may uh, you, you may be assigned when you pass an, an OTP flow, um, signs like George, for example, and you use that for another session or for another user, and they only check it's valid. They don't check it's for this user or this user. So typical things that happen. Um, Sometimes I've seen this in the past that uh, they would put the OTP and the relation would happen on the client. So they would compare it in the client or save time and put it in the client as a hidden uh, value that I also seen that happen. Uh, legacy login without 2FA. So you may have designed your new login and it's everywhere and it requires 2FA, but there's uh, the old one, the old login you created 10 years ago might still be there without requiring 2FA. I've seen that happen. Insecure random, that's also typical, etc. So this is a screenshot of Google, just Googling hackerone.com reports, OTP, and this everything that comes there. Uh, there's, there's plenty of, of bugs uh, for, for OTP. We are not gonna be focusing on those. We're gonna focus on the core, core issue with OTP. Uh, also, other things we uncover, theme swaps, SS7 attacks, social engineering, or malware. I mean, we can discuss those at, at the end, but uh, I'm not going to be covering those. I think those have been covered already uh, many times. Okay, let's start with attacking a single OTP. Um, before we do that, let's discuss about the Windows, not the Microsoft Windows, so the Windows uh, of OTP. So it's an arbitrary time when an OTP is valid. So for OTPs, it's very simple, especially those delivered through SMS. There's a start and a finish line of when it's, they are valid. And, OT, and in TOTP, it's a sliding window. So it's going to change a little bit the math on how we do stuff. Uh, but you don't need to be an expert. Just understand when I'm talking about windows, I'm talking about a period of time. OK. Attacking a single OTP. So we have a, let's start with, for example, a four digit OTP like Uber decided to use. So we have four zeros to four nines. So we have 10,000 possibilities, right? That's the space. What are the chances or the odds of guessing? Anyone? Yeah, it's one out of 10,000, 10, right? It is pretty basic, probabilistic uh, 101. Uh, if we allow five attempts, and this is pretty common, allow three to five attempts because people make mistakes. And I made mistakes too, especially when I receive it from a short code. I sometimes copy the short code uh, phone number instead of the OTP. So uh, if it happens to me that I've been in this, in this industry for a while, uh, people mess up when copying things. So still, it's 0 0.05% uh, chance of guessing. That's not bad, not great but let's continue and see where it goes. So let's assume this, these are OTPs sent through SMS or email. They are valid for three minutes. Uh, you may be wondering why three minutes, why not one second? It's because SMS and email can take time. Have you ever uh, used a service that you ask, hey, send me an SMS or email, and you are like waiting for a couple of minutes and it never arrives, and then you have to click again. So yes, having it uh, valid for a couple of minutes, that's pretty standard. Even three minutes is pretty conservative in this case. Five valid attempts in three minutes, that's also conservative. Uh, of course, in this case, windows are three minutes long. And we request multiple OTPs in three minutes. We'll assume that 
it's going to be up to 10, for example, that you can request in, in one window. So you are super anxious, you requested it, 30 seconds later, request other, and you request up to, and we limited that to 10. So we can start doing the, the math. So we do the math, and it's pretty simple still, and it's 0 0.5%, so one in 200 chances of guessing. So if Uber decided to use these parameters, it would be one in 200 chances of guessing. Do you think that's good or good enough? In my opinion, no. I mean, I wouldn't want anyone with a one out of 200 chances of getting into my Uber account and riding for free. So next step that we can do is repeat the attack. And this is what the researcher of the back bounty told us that he could do. He could repeat the attack or at the attempt of trying to add a new device. So what happens after three minutes, right? So attacker can request another 10 OTPs. They're gonna be completely different or not, maybe it's random, uh, but the 10 previous OTPs are not valid anymore unless there's a collision, right? So the first are expired. And so that's where I was mistaken. I thought it's still one in 200, but that's not, not the case. Uh, I'm gonna briefly try to explain why not. I'm not a math teacher, so uh, deal with me. Uh, so I'm gonna use another example, a pretty basic one is throwing dices, and I'm gonna throw it twice. So the first throw, what are the odds of having a six? So it's one out of six, right? Uh, or of at least one of the two throws being a six. So I did the exhaustive list, and that's the easiest way of doing it. Of course, you can't do that in, in the OTP calculations, but it's, in this example, it's easy to do. So it's in the first one, in the first row having a six, and the second one having either one to six. And the opposite, right? One to six, and the second uh, throw being a six. Of course, that's a repeated case that I canceled there. So we have 11 cases here. So 11 out of 36 is one out of three around there. So we went from one out of six and with two dices to one out of three. Does it look good? Makes sense? I, I'm not a great uh, teacher on this, but trust me on the math and actually don't trust me. <laughs> okay, so why I'm gonna talk about another way of calculating this because I cannot do the exhaustive list with calculating OTP. So the other shortcuts on calculating this stuff without doing a, a full list. Again, I'm gonna be super fast at this. And I'm saying, what's the probability of at least one throw being six? It's one minus the probability of both throws not being six. And now we need to calculate the probability of both throws not being six. So we'll start with the probability of one throw not being six is one, one minus the probability of one throw being six. So that's 0 0.83. So the probability of one throw being between one and five. And the probability of both throws not being six is the probability of one throw not being six squared. Uh, and that's give me this 0 0.694. And if we invert it again to get it to the uh, original uh, formula, we get the same number that I had before, 0 0.3. Uh, make sense? I know it's hard to <laughs> keep track of everything, so don't worry. I just want to make sure that I explained I did the math and not, I'm not coming up with these numbers randomly because they start to get suspicious, let's say. Okay, wake up. <laughs> okay, so let's keep data going. We're gonna continue right now with four digits OTP. So in one hour, I'm gonna have 20 windows of three minutes. In a day, how, what are the odds of guessing? What would you say? With five attempts, all the same. Oh, sorry. 91% chance of success in just one day. And that's why I wanted you to trust my math and that I'm not coming up with these numbers randomly because it's like, hey, you can't brute force a four digit ODP in one, in one day with 91% chance of success. The answer is yes. So you're gonna say, okay, most services respected ones use six digits, not four, right? So that changes the whole thing. Let's do the math. So this is the formula I've been using for everything. Uh, five is attempts, 
10 is the amount of valid OTPs, uh, a million here is the space, and 480 is the amount of windows you have in, for example, one day. And the one minus one minus, you remember that from the, the original equation I showed you. Okay, I explained everything there. <laughs> okay, six digits. The probability of success in a day is 2.3%. Still is not great, but let's see what happens in 100 days, 91%. And in six months, 99%. So am I saying that you can brute force with these parameters, six digits OTP in six months with almost 100% of probability? Yes. And this doesn't require a lot of requests per second. So you can do this in any home machine and every now and then send a couple of requests and trying. I will, I'll give you tips of how to do that also. Okay. So you know, maybe wonder, okay, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna use OTP anymore, uh, but let's uh, stay here for a while. So I was also not trusting my math. That's why I also told you don't trust my math. So what can I do to validate my math? So I created a, a simulator. Uh, so the simulator doesn't have any math, it's just simulating stuff. And that's what I did, it has a couple of parameters. Uh, this is open source, so you can go to the repo. And this is the, the code. It's just doing all of this. And I said, okay, I'm going to run it for a couple of examples that I've been showing you and see what are the results. Okay, 91%, that's my calculation. 91% is what it, uh, the simulator said. The same here, 2.3, 2.38, and 907, uh, uh, 91%. So you can see that you can start trusting my numbers because the simulator is also giving me the same numbers. Questions so far? Awesome. Okay, so one thing that you were considering is, okay, so we are gonna, okay, give me one second. We're gonna talk about how brute forcing windows for OTPs and for, especially for the ones that are generated randomly, not the TOTPs. And they are independent within Windows, right? So the 10 that you created first are not valid anymore, unless there's a collision, of course. So it's okay to, ask, to attempt the same OTPs when brute forcing. So if it's six digits, you could do this all the time. If this is five attempts, you try this all the time. That, that's, that's fine. For TOTP, you need to be a little bit more conscious about how you do it. And, and that's due to the sliding window. And I'm gonna get into details there. Um, also, I'm going to base everything on what's the typical standard and is that the time steps in TOTP, especially for any service that uses a Google Authenticator, is 30 seconds and they are valid for uh, two time steps, and that's one minute. There are other implementations that differ a lot from this, but this is the pretty common and that's where I'm going to focus the math on real typical implementations for TOTP. And I don't know if you've been thinking about this already, but if you are the victim of this, you will be constantly receiving SMS and emails about OTPs that you are not requesting. So that's probably pretty weird thing that happens. And user may go to support and say, hey, I'm receiving a lot of OTPs. Uh, what do you think the support people will say of our company? Like Uber, you contact Uber support and say, hey, I'm receiving OTPs all the time, I'm not requesting. Just say, just ignore them. That's the, the security feature is that if you don't type it, then it's fine, right? So, but still it's pretty noisy. And that's different with uh, TOTPs. They are not noisy because nothing is being delivered to the user. They will not know that they are being attacked. Okay, so that's what I mentioned you for TOTP is you have two time steps and we have the window that is valid for two is two time steps long. Uh, let's say that we have the OTP zero generated in time step zero is going to be valid for the time step one. And then we generate, uh, we, we don't generate, the algorithm, algorithm generates another OTP one and OTP two. So you see in one window, we have OTP one, OTP zero, OTP one, and then OTP1 and OTP2 valid. Uh, so that changes how we do the formula. So the three is because we are gonna be do splitting the attempts. 
the first three attempts are going to be in between time step one and time step two, and the other two attempts are go I'm going to do it between time step two and time step by the end. So that's why the formula changes a little bit. So what do you think? This is better or not than OTP? The probability of guessing in six months is around 93%. So this just any authenticator implementation. This is not, hey, this is something that you are massaging the numbers. I'm using a typical time set 30 seconds, Windows one minute, uh, five attempts, and that's it. And this is completely silent. The user will not know that they are being attacked. Okay, so I thought, okay, I'm done. I already proved it's not safe, or what can we do? Paralyzed attack. So we've been attacking one user at a time right now. Why would we do that? Why not attack several users at the same time? So we have services like WhatsApp and Uber where one valid OTP is uh, a successful login, right? And we have services that OTP or TUTP is being used just for uh, the second factor. But if we are doing for the second, we are attacking some service that is using for second factor, then we can use something like credential staffing. And this is what our zero Okta says, like, this is pretty common, right? All half of the logins requests they receive are credential staffing. So attackers knows how to do this. And something important that Google says is that people reuse passwords. So you probably can have a good database of valid user passwords. And then you, what you need to do is just attack the OTP or, or the TOTP if it's being used in that service. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's continue with the same example as before, six digits, 10 valid at a time for three minutes, five attempts. Let's attack only a hundred users. So big services have way more than a hundred, but let's start with a hundred and say we have, I'm pretty sure that those hundred, I know the user and password are correct. So in one day, you have 91% chance of success of getting at least access to one user, right? So before with one user requ required, I think a hundred days to get to this probability, but you attack a hundred users, you can be successful in one day. If I, getting access to one user is already a good profit for you as an attacker, then that's great. <laughs> okay, so we might say, okay, so six digits is not enough, probably eight fixes it. So let's attack a hundred users in parallel. So now in 100 days, we have 91% chance of success with eight digit OTP. So we see that if we move our attack to attacking 100 users in parallel, that's a pretty conservative number. You will still be able to defeat eight digits or OTP. Okay, let's go to 1,000, right? 100 is conservative. So in 15 days, you have 97% 90, chance of success of uh, attacking or being successful with one user. So again, a digit does not work. So you may be saying, okay, let's move to alphanumeric characters, but let's not get there yet. Let's do rate limits. Everyone do is doing rate limits. So that should probably be fixing this issue, right? Let's see the math. So we're gonna be allowing 60 per month. And that's, for example, if you are a financial institution like a bank, maybe it's you wanna allow your users to log in and transact uh, once per day, right? So two, two OTPs per day, 60 per month. Again, pretty conservative. Again, in one month attacking a hundred, uh, sorry, a thousand users with six digit OTP, there's a 95 chance of success. So rate limits help, but don't solve the issue at all. And this is the, the, the math that I did. This is the formula and 60 there is uh, the rate limit. <coughs> Question so far? Are you concerned? <laughs> I am. Okay, so uh, running out of ideas on how to help with this, but yeah, let's go with alphanumeric. It sucks. So I give a couple of examples there of alph alphanumeric. They, they suck, and we'll see why. So if you are copy pasting, it's usually okay. Uh, you can make mistakes, you can add other characters uh, by mistake. You can have typo errors. 
uh, you may have, you may have some disabilities like short sighted, uh, hands up, motricity disabilities to use a, a keyboard. So being human is also a, a disability because we make mistakes even if we are in a perfect good health. And this is something I recorded on my iPhone, typing the first one. So my keyboard is in Spanish. Uh, so when I typed the first one, it auto-corrected it to to ama. It's, it's hard to say, but ama is love. Uh, Okay, so mobile phones also have automatic case changes, and that's also an issue. In this case, the first one, the Tuvam or Tavam, started with a, a, an uppercase, but it may not be the case. Autocorrect, that's the one I'm showing. And also, you have to avoid characters that look very similar. Uh, I don't think I have anyone in these examples, uh, but yeah, you can see the typical one and L, depending on the fonts. But yeah, let's do the math with alphanumeric. It works. So it has, in this example, I'm going to do it with a 58 character universe. I think in this one I removed, let me see. I don't have it. I think I removed some characters that look alike. So it should be safe. And it's using lowercase, uppercase, and numbers. Six digit OTP length with 60 attempts per month, red limits. Uh, that's why we talk also that Red limits help. For six months, attacking 10,000 users, so going a little bit beyond what we've been attacking. And yeah, the chances of success are much lower. I'm not gonna say that it's perfect, but at least it's it's better. Uh, am I saying everyone go move to alphanumeric OTPs? No, no way, because you will have a lot of user churn and complaints, a lot of support tickets. So don't just go and change it to alphanumeric. It won't fix the, all the issues you have. Okay, so mitigations. I'll be honest, I don't have a mitigation that fully works. Uh, so I, that's what I was trying, all the, all the things, like rate limits, that would probably solve it. No, it didn't. Uh, so let's talk about a couple of them. So the first one is deliver always the same OTP during the same window, that's especially for SMS and email when they are being delivered. Uh, so that probably means uh, in, encrypting those in the backend because somebody say, oh, I'm gonna do uh, an HMAX, so uh, no one has access to that. But if you do that, then you need to create a new OTP whenever a new one is requested. So encrypting is probably uh, the best thing here. Don't go further than three to five attempts. That's what we've been doing here. So it's not uh, increasing a lot, but it's not making it worse. Uh, limit the amount of attempts per user per day, per week, per month. So you can do a lot of granularity on rate limits. So just don't say, hey, I'm going to do this big rate limit. So you can do many things there. Especially if, when you're attacking a thousand users in parallel. So your infrastructure, then you're going to need something better than just a random computer there doing requests. It's not a lot. It's probably in the thousands of requests per second. Uh, but still, you will start seeing a lot of requests hitting the same endpoint by the same IP address if you don't have a big pool of IP addresses. So you can start detecting those things. Uh, incremental failure delays, uh, that's also you can do. I mean, why allow 30 uh, attempts, failure attempts, uh, one after the other? Why not do incremental delays? And you can also do a reset of those whenever a, a user logs in successfully uh, to help them out, right? So, because if the incremental delays also go against the user experience. The decoration stuff in attacks. I'm not gonna get into details in here. There's a lot of the internet about that, but yeah. What I was mentioning, like IP rate limits, uh, that's something you could do. And uh, leaks password checks, so make sure that the passwords are not compromise of your user base. Uh, maybe someone is testing the same passwords, like password, 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 uh, in different users. So if you detect those behaviors, you can may know, hey, I'm being, my service is being under attacked. Maybe I should do something about it. Uh, okay. I may have it afterwards, but I wanna uh, talk about that. So whenever you, feel attacked, what can you do? Uh, I think I have in another slide here, but 
I'm going to get ahead of that. Uh, so something you could do is you can dynamically increase the size of the OTP, or you can decide to change it from six digits num numeric to alphanumeric. The thing you can do, uh, you can suddenly start asking for captchas. They suck, but hey, you're under attack. Uh, you can do service-wide captchas, or you can do per user if you're only detecting some users being attacked. So there's things that you can react on, and and your UX would normally be great unless you are being attacked and then your UX probably sucks, but you are protecting your users. Okay. Uh, other things typically don't disclose if the OTP or the password is wrong. Uh, don't give hints to the user that the credential stuffing is working, that they know the real user and password. Use special solutions and that would be the ideal world. Yeah. Everyone, let's go use UV keys or U2F uh, and we are done. Have you ever deployed? this in a big service, it's, it's, it's hard. Uh, most users won't have a hardware key. And, and if you require them, then you can expect to get all your users churn and leave your service. There are other things that you can do. You can use push authentication. And there are services for that. And you can also use direct carrier billing. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not either. Uh, the thing is I Googled every word. I wanted to find the, the protocol that they are using. I couldn't find it. Uh, but it, what it does is the carriers a few years ago decided, Hey, how can we make users buy stuff and get built on their mobile bill? Instead of having bank accounts, you're char char charged directly there. So that, that's what the red carrier billing is. And it's being used today to offer to FA. Twilio is offering the company I work for is using that. It's called in silent off. I don't know how the service works. I'm not involved in that. So I'm not going to say it's secure. I expect it to be more secure because there are more things there. The, the few things I found. So yeah, interesting solution to find. And why I'm talking about this one, because this one is mostly available. If your country has direct, direct current billing, then every user in your country is supported. And that's compared to U2F keys where most people don't have it or push authentication where another app is required. So the friction is pretty high. The career billing UX is pretty good. Uh, so yes, does everyone on your platform need to be super secure? Maybe yes, maybe not. If it's, for example, uh, Instagram, Twitter, maybe you want to protect those users with more than 10,000 followers, for example. So you may want to force them to use something like U2F and the rest use OTP. If you're attacked and you are compromised, I'm sorry. Uh, it could be your, your, what, what you decide to do. Okay. Yeah. I had a, a slide of that. So this is all, all what I mentioned is so you can move a little bit your protections depending of you are being attacked or not, or you can detect if something odd is going on. Uh, so you can do JavaScript, uh, validations, proof of work. I'm not saying it works, but there are things that you can use. Uh, channel the user with knowledge question. Again, this sucks, but may help. Uh, send another OTP through another channel. So you may deliver a 60 digit OTP through SMS, but you detect something odd is going on. So you say, okay, I'm going to deliver you um, an email with another 60 digit OTP. Or even better, you can deliver them an email or even an SMS with a, a link that, that you, they need to click that may have a lot more entropy than a six digit, like you would have a um, hundred characters, let's say random. This is what they discuss, increasing the length of the OTP or character set, uh, send email alerts to users. Hey, you shouldn't be panicking, but I think you are being attacked. And uh, the question is what can the user do? So you, if you do send users these kind of emails, make sure you give them some remediations of what they need to do. Uh, hey, you should be probably enrolling a U2F key or doing something else, or I don't know, you decide. So I give, gave you many mitigations. None of them work alone, so you would need to combine them. I also suggest you to do the math, whatever you decide, uh, because you may say, oh, I want the window to be 30 seconds long or to be only one valid at a time, not 10. So do the math. Uh, so that's why I gave you all the formulas in my blog post. There's also a lot of links to Wolfram Alpha. Alpha. So you just need to change a little bit the numbers and you can do the, the math there. 
And again, uh, I'm not saying OTP or TOTP is dead. I think it, I'm saying just be careful where you're implementing it and depending on the service you're implementing this and do the math and accept the risk that you want uh, in there. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, implementations are not foolproof, uh, so think about that. Design your security around your acceptable risk. And this fine is applied to any low entropy challenge. So it's not just the typical SMS uh, OTP. So whatever has uh, low entropy, this may be subject to the same type of attacks. So again, if you are using that in any case, like I mentioned, maybe someone doesn't think that the LCD screen they have on their credit card with a three digit CBB, that's also a low entropy challenge and that's also an OTP, for example. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, you're, you're a very good time. Um, thank you for, for everything and thank, thank you for your talk, uh, Santiago. Uh, anyone uh, from the audience have some questions about it? Uh, I, I think it's really clear uh, at the beginning, but uh, uh, I, I think we have to believe because in Argentina they have a, a Mercado Libre and he work in this uh, marketplace. So I believe in your math. And uh, but obviously someone of you have some question about it. Please uh, go ahead. Which one? Okay, please. Uh, the first one. Yeah, you please. Just maybe it's easier. No, but I said the weakness is yeah. So the weakness is based on input, right? So no, no, it's, uh, it's based on the nature of the OTP. So it, it's independent of how the OTP is being inserted or typed or populated into the app. Yeah, but the checker requires the input field to to do the attempts, as as you showed in the in the window. So in this case, I don't give a chance for the attacker to do the input, uh, the device or the app. But the app on the backend has an API to try that. Okay. So you don't do it through the app. The attackers won't, to be clear, attackers won't attack it through your app. You will attack it through APIs yeah. or automation. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, the attempts. They are gonna be everything automated through a backend. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. May you go back to mitigation number five for a second? Because what I wonder is if you don't disclose if the OTP or password is wrong, the whole attack would be a lot more difficult, right? Because uh, credential stuffing then is not as easy to do. So I wonder why even major companies like uh, Microsoft... UX, user experience. That's the only reason because yeah. okay. uh, I, I work, my colleague is like Amazon in Latin America. Mm. So every decision that you make, you need to AV test how it's going to affect users not being able to log in. A user that doesn't log in is a user that doesn't buy. Mm. I mean, I, I even encountered that on ADFS by Microsoft and that's just stupid in my opinion. Yeah. I, I, you need to analyze each use case, but I can tell you that in websites that rely, their revenue relies on a user being able to log in, mm -hmm. they will lower their defenses. It, it's not wrong. I mean, credit cards have been doing that for, for years. They are still doing that. Uh, not here in Europe, but in the US, where you're still using magnetic stripe, or even when you're buying online, just a number and you're done. Um, I don't think I have the numbers here, but if you look at the fraud that's happening with credit cards, it's been increasing and it's in the billions and billions every year. And they could deploy better solutions. I think they're actually doing right now, at least in Europe. Uh, but they've been accepting the risk. They accept that they want to lose. They accept to lose billions every year because they see that if not, they may cause users to stop buying because they may not have the app 
they may not know how to finalize the flow of buying. So, uh, Santiago, we have another question here for Emil. Um, thanks for your talk. Really insightful. Um, <clears throat> I had a question about reducing the number of attempts. I think in your examples you had five attempts. <clears throat> what if you lower that to three? How much does it improve, you know, or reduce the chances of getting a successful uh, token? It doesn't change the, the numbers. If you move it from five to three, it do doesn't change that much. Uh, I used five because in my experience, that's what most websites use. I've seen websites use eight also. Um, you may be surprised how many times people get it wrong, especially people that remember their passwords. And they usually use the same five or passwords in, in, in different websites. So they start trying one after the other. And, and sometimes a website has a password policy that changed their typical password. So they they need to figure that out. Uh, so that's why that, that number changes. And it depends. You would, you need to analyze in your service, how often people make mistakes. Uh, just one more question. Sure. Yeah. Hello, Sandy Gill. Amazing talk. Uh, I had one question for the next slide. So. How do you not tell the, how do you not disclose that the OTP is wrong? Because for the password, I can understand that. Yeah. You can say that the login or the password is wrong. If you ask the OTP first. You ask the OTP first. And if, if you ask the OTP first, don't say it's wrong. Wait till the end. Maybe the, it will be wait till the end and then give an answer. Oh, okay. So after they have inputted the output. After the user, imp user input everything, yeah. then tell them if it's wrong or not. Oh, okay. Don't disclose anything in the middle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and we have two more questions. Just yeah, one. sure. First time. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Uh, from a practical point of view, have you tested this kind of scheme of solution on real system? My concern is related. How many systems today allow the user to attempt 10 uh, uh, OTP requests in one minute? It depends. Uh, I, I know for sure that there are many. Especially when you ask for, hey, send me another one, send me another one, send me another one. Uh, they, in most cases, send a different one. They don't send the same one. Uh, but yeah, it, it depends. I mean, you can play around with the parameters. Yes, sometimes it's going to get better, but it's not going to change uh, drastically uh, the, the, the problem. My, my question was related how many uh, authentication systems in real system like uh, Google, Microsoft, etc., are allowing the user to request 10 uh, OTP in uh, one minute and for so six it months. It doesn't need to be one minute. It has to be in the time window that they are valid. Yeah, okay. And it could be 10 minutes, the, the, the window. Um, I don't know. I have not done the research to say, hey, these are all the services that have these settings. Uh, but in my experience, I've seen many things. Uh, I've seen sites that do better than others, and also it's not better, it's also the UX. You also need to consider that they want you to log in. They want the real user to log in, so they will give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and just one more. You see? Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so obviously when you sign up for a lot of accounts, they will be like, oh, um, maybe you've used a UF2 key, but put a backup code in, or here's a list of 10 backup codes, or you've got one time passcode and here's a list of 10 backup codes. So in the grand scheme of things, um, does any of the actual more secure methods really make a huge difference? Because there's always going to be some form of backup. And at that point, does it really matter that you can brute force the one-time passcode if you could just brute force an eight-character GitHub key that they've given you every single time? Well, that's up to you, to the, the service that you are, you are securing, and you decide if you want to have a fallback uh, and what the fallback is. I have not done the math for backup codes. I don't know. I probably they are the math is not the same because they are very limited. But yeah, I think in most services, your backup is an SMS deliver OTP. And then in that case, even if you have U2F, uh, the, the risk is still there. What you could do is apply stricter rate limits and say, hey, you reach the limit for OTPs. Why don't you go and fetch your U2F key?
Any other question? I still be around. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Arun. Yeah.